Hello, this is a recording of the GRE Math Review Packet, the arithmetic section, problems number 12 through 15. First up, problem number 12. A particular stock is valued at $40 per share. If the value increases by 20%, stop right there, what does it mean for something to increase by 20%? It means that you need to multiply it by 1.2. Why 1.2? Well, if it's going to increase, that means you have 100% of it, and then you add on another 20% of it. 100% is 1, and 20% as a decimal is 0 0.2. So if you want 120% of something, you would be multiplying by 1.2. After it increases by 20%, then it decreases by 25% of that value that you had after increasing. So once again, in, this time we're going to be decreasing by 25%. What does that mean? Well, if you decrease by 25%, ultimately what you have left is 75% of what you start with. So you're going to multiply by 0.75. You have your 100%, and then you take away 25%, leaving you with 75%. And as a decimal, that's 0.75. Okay, now... You started with 40, you multiply that by 1.2, be it on a calculator or change it to a fraction, whatever you need to do, 40 times 1.2 is 48. Now that 48 is what you use to decrease by 25%. You could do that in your head. I mean, you don't have to multiply by 0.75, um, decrease by 25%. You can figure out what a fourth of it is and take it away. A fourth of 48 is 12. When you take away 12, you end up with 36. So that's your final answer, 36. Okay, next question. Number 13, if the ratio of the number of men to women to the number of women on a committee of 20 members is 3 to 2. There's a lot going on there. Don't even go any further. Let's stop right there. Let's have some variables. M is going to stand for the number of men. W is going to stand for the number of women. Now, they say that the ratio is 3 to 2. Ratio can be written many ways, but one way is to uh, separate the two parts by a colon. So M to W is 3 to 2. But right in the middle of that, they start talking about this 20. And that's the total number of members on the committee. So if you add... M plus W, you end up with 20. Okay. Now, the way ratios go is this is the lowest version of it, but, but any ratio can be multiplied if you take both parts by a, by a constant. If we take this ratio and double it, it, could, it would be 6 to 4. It's the same as 3 to 2. It reduces down to be 3 to 2, but it's uh, 6 to 4. If we triple it, it'll be 9 to 6. Okay, why are we doing this? Well, the question says, how many members of the committee are women? And so, we know they must add up to 20, and none of these add up to 20. The first adds up to 6, the second one adds up to 10, this one here adds up to 15. If we take the original one and times it by 4, that's the one that will add up to 20. 12 plus 8 will be equal to 20. So, this is the the actual split that will give you a sum of 20 and be in a ratio of 3 to 2. But don't get it wrong at this point. The order matters. You have 12 men and you have 8 women. So the answer to the question is that on this committee, for that ratio to hold and for there to be 20 total people, it must be 8 women. Okay, great. Next question. Um, A is an even integer and B is an odd integer. So A is, A is even and B is odd. Let's highlight that. So we're going to create a, a chart with a bunch of different formulas combining A's and B's together. There'll be integers, and the question is, will that energy that you get out be even or odd? So before we do that, we want to make sure that we understand what... Uh, how, how it works. And so 
if you add an even to an even, or if you subtract an even from an even. Here's two examples, 4 and 14 added together, or 16 and 10. I made it sure that the higher number was on the left. Um, these examples don't prove it, um, but we're not trying to prove on this. We're just trying to get an idea of what it is. And so, um, yeah, an even plus an even, or an even minus an even should still be even. Okay. How about if they're both odd? A 5 plus 11, or a 13 take away 7. You end up with an even number as well. And then if they're mixed, one being even, another being odd, you're going to end up with an odd. 6 plus 7 is an example, or 14 minus 3 is another example. So it's the mixture for addition and subtraction that ends up odd, while if they are the same, then it's going to end up even. Okay, so let's see if we can answer this question here. So we know that uh, A is even, and B is odd, but if you double an odd, it's going to be even. And we just seen that an even plus an even is even. Okay. If you double an even, you get even. B is odd, so we're in the mixed situation. Even plus an odd. Therefore, it must be odd. The next one is look at multiplication. So let's consider that. An even times an even. A you know, multiple of 2 times a multiple of 2 is bound to end up as a multiple of 2. It's going to be even. How about an odd times an odd? One more than a multiple of 2 times one more than a multiple of 2 will always end up as odd. And then finally, if there's a mixture, if there's an even in the mix at all, then it's going to be a multiple of 2 in the end. It's going to be even. And so... The only time it's odd is if they're both odd. Okay, back to the problem. We have a mixture. We have an even and an odd. So the result is even. This next question has exponents. We have a to the b. Well, exponents is just repeated multiplication. So what happens if you have an even raised to any power? Even raised to an odd power, even raised to an even power, regardless. It's going to be a multiple of 2. It's going to be even. That's what we're looking at here. We're looking at an even raised to an odd power. An even number cubed or an even number to the fifth. It's still going to be a multiple of 2. It's going to be even. So the result is that this guy is even. Okay. Well, it doesn't really show in this problem, but just in case we thought about it, what about an odd to any power? Okay. A 3 squared or a 5 cubed that'll always end up as odd. Okay, but that's not in this problem. Anyway, um, we add these guys together. So an odd, an even plus an odd, an even plus an odd. We already said the mixture is odd. And now we have an odd number squared. So I guess it did kind of show up in this problem. We have an odd number that is squared. And so, yeah, that's going to be odd. Okay, so an even squared is even and odd squared is odd according to what we just done and now we subtract even minus odd we've seen before if there's a mixture the result is odd so we fully answered that question and all, all you need is a few examples to convince yourself uh, it's not a proof or anything but you're not trying to prove anything on the GRE you just want to get to the answer as quickly as you can okay and the last problem for this set Number 15, when the positive integer n is divided by 3, the remainder is 2. Stop right there. So if I take n and divide it by 3, I get something. It doesn't really matter what it is. I get some constant k, and then I have a remainder of 2. This is just any constant. Okay. Okay. Then it keeps going. It says, now nah, let's start all over again. When n is divided by 5, the remainder is 1. Some other constant. Maybe it isn't the same constant. So this is just some other constant here. What does this mean? Remainder of 2 and remainder of 1. It means you have some left over. If you were to take this equation and multiply it out, you'd have that n is equal to 3k. You'd have that n is equal to 3k and then the remainder of 2 part would mean to you that 
you're two more than that. Okay, on on the um, second information, n is equal to 5c with a remainder of 1, that means that you're one more than that. Remainders are more, leftovers. So the words behind these symbols mean the following. n is some number that is two more than some multiple of 3. I don't know which one, but I'm pretty sure that has to be true. If you divide by 3, you end up with a remainder of 2. That means you must be two more than a multiple of 3. On the second case, you must be one more than a multiple of 5. And this is the same value in. So basically what we're going to do is just go grab a chart and try to just look at the first few options. The first few options. So here we go. We have 3. We're going to add 2. So that's just going to give us a 5. And that doesn't work out. We're looking for something that's going to be a solution to both of these at the same time. All right. Then we have 6. We're going to add to that and get 8. 9, add 2 to that and get 11. Over here, 5, add 1 to that, get 6. Here we go right now. 10, add 1 to that, we get 11. So the final result is that 11 is the least possible value of n. There'll be more. Like You can keep going with this. You'll find another. But um, the answer to the question is 11. Okay, great.